He thought that it's an open tail of the other day, but it's the guys with something tail of the other day. Oh, 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 I had the opportunity to live in Austria for a couple of years right out of high school and uh, learned German and had the opportunity to uh, take a cassette tape home with me and uh, my dad has a potato farm in Idaho and on the tractor going around around a field 16 hours a day after I got back in 76 out of boredom I basically learned how to do that. And when I used to come home at night, I'd practice in the garage, and my dad and mom would say, that's enough, you got to quit and go to bed because they couldn't stand it because when you're learning how to do yodeling it can be very distracting <laughs> and it can be very bad and uh, so it wasn't anything that I figured I would do for a living full time it was just something I learned to enjoy and it made the time go faster on that tractor <laughs> this song is uh, called Ono Kimosabi and the reason it's called Ono Kimosabi is that's exactly what Tonto would have said if the Lone Ranger had ever sung this song on the back of Old Silver <laughs> A lot of these songs I explain to the people uh, what they're all about. Some of the songs, well, there'll be a few jokes with them. And so it's kind of a a comedy routine with uh, with really high quality yodeling. That's what I usually do for the people. And Ono Kibosabi is basically the William Tell Overture in yodeling form. And if you ever really want to get into some real inter intricate yodeling, is try and do yodeling within uh, um, melody lines of songs. And if there's a song that's probably the hardest one to do, that I do, it's uh, the Ono Kimosabi, or the William Tell Overture. <laughs> I sometimes do a straight German show where we do just German, Swiss, and Austrian songs. I can do a, strictly a western show where I put on my boots and my hat. drawn a blank. Good land, what will it be? Befuddled and confused for compliments and such. Says I, for a great big gal, you sure don't sweat that much. Oh, she taught me to yodel. Then you can explore the yodeling from all over the world and, and then that, that makes for a, 
a large variety and a really nice show because people uh, usually don't see all the different styles together. Well, Emily was about three when she first started to learn how to yodel. In fact, she, I'm probably only about four years ahead of her in yodeling because when she was just this teeny little girl, she would hear me do it and, and she thought that everybody could do it. And that's how uh, yodeling is taught in Europe. I do shows from anywhere from um, two to three people in a small uh, house you know, environment or a small lodge and I've played it for as many as uh, about 20,000 in the Marriott Center at uh, a big university in our area. But I imagine that for the most part my shows run from about 1,500 down to about four or 500. And I, a lot of the festivals that you play at are maybe uh, 500 to about a 900 uh, person audience. When I first started doing the mouth trumpet, that was a, a completely uh, spontaneous thing. I was uh, doing one of my yodeling songs, and, and I forgot m my words, and so I popped into this just to get through the song. And this little lady came up after, and she says, oh, I like that. You should put that on a tape. And I said, well, ma'am, I just forgot my words. And that's how it all got started. something that I use to break up a lot of my show and uh, so that you don't have all yodeling in the show and you know, I'll do a couple of those type of numbers in the show just for, uh, for variety. Oh, 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 oh,